Let's see here. How does this sound song? What song? On the first day of hoboing, my hobo cat gave to me. Oh, you don't have to do that. But you're so warm, soft, and cute. And why am I hearing a voice? Why, why, why are you pointing towards the computer? Oh, darn, I did that again? Oh. Hello again, welcome. I do apologize for that. I'm trying to think of lyrics for the 12 days of hoboing. And I figured I'd get my cat involved. She was kind of staring at me. I kind of was at work, stuck at work all day. And she wanted a little attention. I figured I'd give her some. I did not realize I left this camera on. Darn technology. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. My name is the one and only Hobo Tom. And you are watching the, the Hobo and his girlfriend show. I know there's still a somewhat open casting call for the girlfriend. And well, we'll see what happens. Um, so tonight was SmackDown. And it was really fun. It's they they're trying to change things up a little bit. I really don't want to see them change up SmackDown too much because it's doing really good. I'm gonna like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, if you do leave a comment like Saint Three One Eight did, um, I will try to respond to your comment and give you a little shout out too. Because I think because of the fact that you took some time out, I should take some time out to acknowledge you. Um, 318's comment was, if I'm going to watch Wrestle Kingdom, tentatively, I want to say it's January 4th. So I have to kind of see what my work schedule is. I would like to. It all depends, I think on the time because I think I would have to be up until I think 2 2 a.m. and I'd have to figure out if it's I guess it would be f Friday or Saturday morning I have to figure things out and it again depends on my work schedule too unfortunately I'm not monetized yet so again, have to wait a little bit on that. Um, if I have to work Saturday, probably not. Again, you have to do what pays the bills first. When YouTube decides to monetize me one day, and it makes sense, yes, I will do all things wrestling, or the majority of things wrestling. I do have another career that I'm trying to get into. In fact, I have to send out some emails kind of soon. But again, until then, I have my other job, which is okay. And I have this, and I have you YouTube folks to, to, to thank for it, because again, without your support, I would not be doing this as long as I have, and I've almost been at this for a year, which is amazing. So again, Saint318 left a comment. You get something in return. And now let's move on to the main part of the show. Let's talk about some SmackDown. Um, it starts off with uh, Shane McMahon in the locker room in front of uh, the whole locker room crowd. These segments kind of confuse me because I know just I know the heels and the face kind of have to at, at some point in time share the same space. It's always weird to see them. I guess for major announcements they have to be there. I think there were funny stories from WCW. Where when they had to be in the same room, I want to say it was Brian the Hobbs, who just say like the most ridiculous things. I think the one thing, and I've, and I've heard this, 
I forgot on whose show. I want to say... I actually think Hulk Hogan said it. I think it was the Hulk Hogan reality show and Brian Knobs, who I guess is a personal friend of Hulk Hogan, said, yeah, we were in a meeting one day and I... Hey, is this is this some meeting for the truckers? And I guess they like, kicked him out. And that was the end of his career. So again, it's always kind of weird to see, again, everyone in the same room. Not like... I guess they're not shoulder to shoulder, which I guess is good because there is like a little buffer. I want to say AJ Styles was between, well, the New Day was between AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. And they all like wear their wrestling gear, which is kind of weird for a meeting, I guess. But hey, when you go to work, you have a meeting, you dress in work clothes. Um, one of the big things, and I was kind of nervous because the McMahon said changes were coming. But please don't change SmackDown. Uh, Paige is staying on. Daniel Max said that. And then you have kind of an elongated promo. Uh, Becky Lynch, she calls out Ronda Rousey. Shame on you, Ronda Rousey. You didn't even fight me openly. I want to fight you because I'm the man. And Charlotte comes out, and she was wearing way too much makeup. Yeah, it's really obvious when you can tell they go overboard a little bit. That that or the lighting was terrible. And then Asuka came out with her new glitter mask. Asuka always looks great. And I'm kind of happy she did away with a black thong over front. It's not like, I guess, her normal multicolor thong, I guess. And I'm a guy I notice women wearing thongs. I guess that's normal. And then, of course, Vince McMahon... Comes out, it's like, you know what? We're done with this rematch stuff. Which kind of sucks, I know. I want to say in boxing, they actually do have rematch clauses. I think it's like after so many months, like you can have a rematch. I know in the UFC, rematches are more frequent. And pro wrestling was always that thing, oh, well, the next next match I'll have a rematch. I guess they're not doing that anymore. So he says, who wants to challenge? And Naomi comes out with a mic. Naomi looks great. She has a new outfit. She has one of those bathing suits with the sides cut out. Looks really good on her. I think I actually, well, I, well, well I, one of my ex-girlfriends from a long time ago actually wore something like that. And it did look kind of sexy. So our first match of the evening is Naomi versus Asuka. This was a darn good match. I like the fact that they're letting the wrestlers wrestle more so on SmackDown than Raw. Raw is getting to be a little bit better. The last hour of Raw was good. Again, I really enjoyed the, the, the four-way tag team match. To me, it was the best part of Raw last night. The gauntlet match was good. I think they were missing people, and it could have been, again, it could have been booked differently, maybe more entertaining, but we'll see. Because I know, again, SmackDown's going going to go to Fox soon, so Fox is going to want more sports-oriented. SmackDown's the show for them, and, it's, and it really shows. So, again, this match was really good. They had the one spot that, that I, oh, I love that. It was a side rushing leg sweep. Naomi was doing a side Russian leg sweep on on Asuka from the top rope. Something we haven't seen before. Again, if you do something new and something different, it gets a thumbs up from this guy. That's going to increase your rating. Again, for the most part, it was a really good, fun match. It was good outside work. Um, both wrestlers, uh, Naomi and Asuka, made it in before the 10 count. So it had a clean finish. Um, there are reversals. Again, you start to do chain wrestling, you do reversals and counters, and it feels like sport. That's great. I mean, to open this match, I mean, this is a really darn good fun match. It's a surf and turf match.
And the next part you see the Miz and Mr. McMahon. And McMahon just seems annoyed at the Miz. Good. And then you have Rusev. A Rusev promo. He called Nakamura Sonic the Hedgehog. And then this is kind of where, where it got... Uh, it kind of went down a little bit. Then you have a Jeff Hardy comes out, calls out Joe, because Joe is supposed to make some apology. Joe references um, Jeff Hardy's issues he had in TNA Impact Wrestling. Again, probably just like, yep, you didn't bring that up. It's probably healthy for me to talk about it. Again, Jeff Hardy did have some substance abuse issues if you've seen TNA during that time. Like, he came out to... First, he came out... Sting, Sting came out. Jeff Hardy came out, like, late. The ref just looked at him. That's it. Match over. And it was, like, a 30-second a, a match. People were very, very mad at Jeff at the time. Um, so Joe brought that up. It was, it was okay. And then Matt mentioned what Joe did in TNA. That did not go over well. Um, again, his interactions. He didn't say directly, oh, well, in TNA, you are nothing. But he says, oh, yeah, I, I remember those days. But you know what? I don't remember you. And that kind of upset Joe. So, again, he kind of offhandedly mentions the TNA and, and the history between the two. So... That was okay. This is probably going to build up. I, th I think on Christmas Day they're actually having a match. Or they're showing the match Christmas Day. I know for the Raw, it was more like a five-hour show. Whereas they did the live Raw for the show. Then they did like another two hours of wrestling, which was actually what's going to be on next week. So, hey, you know what? I'm fine with that. It's Christmas. Let the wrestlers have a day off with their family. I'll never begrudge anyone time with their family, especially on the holidays. I know um, people find it annoying. The gym I go to, and I'll mention this very quickly, um, they always have their holiday party. You know what? They deserve a holiday party. Let them have their fun. Especially if they get to show up and, and close early. We don't do that. I have a lot of work. That's neither here nor there. Then we have the next match. Um, because again, from one of the promos, McMahon promised he'd find The Miz a tag team partner. And we had a mixed match challenge match of The Miz and Mandy Rose versus Carmel and R-Truth. What does, what does Maurice think of this? I wouldn't... If I was Maurice, I wouldn't want the Miz teaming with Mandy Rose. I hope the WWE doesn't do something stupid like they would have done in the past in a situation like this. Please don't. Have this just be a one-off affair and, and then I'd be fine with it. Or ha or give it stakes. Say, you know what? You beat Carmel and R-Truth once. You beat him a second time. You'll get the Oh, that would be great. Again, WWE, just give me a nickel and take away my copyright violation for that brilliant booking idea. Have them face Carmella and our truth again. This time, give it some stakes and say, you know what? You beat them once. If you can do it a second time, you get their spots and vacation time. That would actually be good. But uh, for the most part, it was, it was a good match. Mandy Rose is getting better. Carmel is improving by leaps and bounds. Um, the Miz and R Truth, and they can put together a show. It was a fun match. Um, I think I'm warming up to that thought a little bit. Again, part of me is still terrified that they're going to do something dumb with the Miz. 
I'll I'll give him the benefit of the doubt though, because it was a little new. I'll say this was a cheeseburger match. I was gonna go ham sandwich, but I think I talked myself into a cheeseburger. Then you have a promo about a whole bunch of new wrestlers coming up. You have Lars Sullivan, uh, Lacey Evans. Heavy Machinery is coming up. My nephews are like that. They're big Heavy Machinery fans. Uh, EC3 and Nikki Cross is also coming. It'll be interesting to see which brand they go to. Heavy Machinery could probably really bolster the Raw Tag Team Division. Nikki Cross could really do amazing stuff in SmackDown. EC3 seems like a Raw guy. Lacey Evans? Probably SmackDown. And Lars Sullivan should probably be on SmackDown too because there's already Ron Strowman over on Raw. Then the next match, you have the Usos versus the Clubs. I'll tell you what, this is another classic tag team match. I'll tell you what, I, I do miss the days of the classic tag team action. And there's just something about it when you get true tag team specialists facing off against one another. Um, Carl Anderson has a new outfit. He's not wearing blue pants. Um, Luke Gallo still looks the same. It was just really good. It's such a good technical tag team wrestling match where they understand kind of the fundamentals of tag team wrestling. Again, you have isolation of, of one person into a corner, uh, uh, tagging in and out relatively quickly, um, always getting that extra shot in before your partner comes in, taking advantage of the rules. And you don't even have to be a healer face because faces do it all the time too. They'll, they'll tag in and then go up to the top rope and, and like drop the double axe handle on the guy's arm and, and very typical things like that. Uh, the heels will tend to do more dastardly tactics like trying to distract the referee while like the other guy like chokes him or something or just pounds on him. Tell you what, that was one spot I, I, th I thought Anderson like fell on his head because he did a, he did the rope assisted, I guess, drop kick on one of the Usos. And I still get the Usos confused. I was say Usos. But he kind of fell really awkwardly and looked like he really just fell on his head. Well, I think his shoulder and back took most of it. Again, it's one of those things around where you just kind of whip your head back and it's not fun. But it was really good. Then then the bar shows up. And then chaos ensues. But really, for the most match, I'll talk about the chaos. But this was, a, again, it's such a good match. However, because of the chaos, there was chaos in the match. You know what that means, baby. And then that's the finish, baby. Nobody wins. In this case, no one did win because Danny came out and started to beat up the club, which on paper should be really good. Those, I don't know. They might screw that up, though. I don't have exact faith in the mid mid card of any WWE product anymore. And then the bar, of course, just go in the, and, and they start beating up the Usos. So we'll see what happens. Then you have Shinsuke Nakamura and a preview for a match against Rusev called Rusev a Total Diva. Again, from his days on Diva with, with his wife, Lana. You know what? Power to Rusev, though. Oh, shut up. Girlfriend, that would be that fun. And ladies of Daytona Beach, you could be here. Maybe you don't want to be here. Uh-oh. And then you have the main event of the evening. Oh, well, you also have the Pancake Party preview, I guess. Uh, Daniel Bryan comes down to the match, cuts a promo. He shames people. Shame on you. You are the most carbon-consuming people here. Shame, shame, shame. I forget if he used Fickle or not. And um, then Andrade Cien Almas comes in. That's a good tag team. And they're facing Mustafa Ali and AJ Styles. AJ starts off versus 
Andrade Cien Almas. AJ Styles is just truly phenomenal. I, I, I don't think there really is a better wrestler. I think in the world than AJ Styles is because he has everything. He has like four or five moves he can beat you with. He's just so smooth. Such a good worker. Knows how to take his bumps. Sells like anything. Wow. I mean, he can tell a really good story in the ring. Probably, you know, have the Hobo Awards go up. Probably the beginning of the, uh, probably the end of next week. I'll figure something out. But probably the number one wrestler in the world to me would be AJ Styles. Two Kenny Omega. It's kind of the same cast of characters, I think. Two's Kenny Omega. Okada, um, Okada's so good though, especially with this new character of just the best Okada is pretty good, really good. Then they, ooh, who would be number four? Probably Seth. And then character alone. Actually, fifth would be probably Cody. Joey Ryan, just because he's such an outrageous character, he's in my top ten somewhere. He's probably number ten or eleven. But again, we'll we'll get to that later. So, oh, I only have a few minutes left on this video. So again, it was really good. AJ Styles is just too much for Andrade Two Masalmas. He said, "Ah, uh -uh. no, Senor and Senorita, no tranquilo for you." At one point, um, when Almas did tag tag in, or when Ali got in. Almost just, just too powerful for Ali, and that makes sense. Then Almost went for the Trilo post. AJ Styles for having none of that. AJ Styles is good. Um, Almost, again, is just getting vicious. Um, he tags in Daniel O'Brien, puts Ali in the Mexican surfboard. <sighs> Such a great looking. Goes for like a. a like Mexican sleeper, where he has his feet hooked in the Mexican surfboard. For instead of grabbing the arms, he just puts him in the dragon sleeper. That just looks vicious. Um, eventually Ali gets out of that. AJ Styles gets a hot tag. Uh, Almus at one point does save Daniel Bryan, and then AJ Styles again. He pulls out. He knows when to do it, and unfortunately, he doesn't do it often enough, but he goes into deep into the bag of tricks, pulled out a Moonsault DDT, which looked absolutely amazing. I mean, it, it was a phenomenal Moonsault DDT. Then he hit... I forget who. No, he hit someone with the phenomenal form, then, then Ali hit the 05, 045. No, oh. 450. 450. 540 splash? I don't know. The, the 054, I think it is. And Ali picked up the win, which is great because, hey, AJ Styles still technically won. He didn't, have, he didn't have to get the pin. And because of the match and the quality was a tag team match, the quality was amazing. This was a flaming yawn match. It was really that good. And again, another really super solid show from SmackDown. It'll be interesting to see what the new year brings. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Uh, tomorrow I will do the Pancake Party kind of review. And I think on Thursday there's another episode where they do the tribute to the groups. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and eventually I'm going to narrow down that 12 Days of Hoboing song just for you folks. Uh, everyone have a good night, and I'll see you guys later. Again, do not forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see everyone later. Bye.